This is the Wing Woman Show. You're listening to The Wing Woman Show, and today's episode is with Jen. She is the founder and CEO of Bridesmaids for Hire and a professional bridesmaid herself. Yes, you heard that right. No need to rewind and listen to that again because she is a professional bridesmaid. And one of my favorite parts of this interview is that she talks about how she trailblazed her own path in the wedding industry, which is a very traditional and saturated industry. And she created her own role company and is now launching books, has a podcast. And I love that she took her passion and love for the wedding industry and made it into something her own and very unique. I remember her from, gosh, honestly, it was probably Four or five years ago now, she was on the Today Show being interviewed as a professional bridesmaid. And I think that even though this episode is short, sweet, and to the point, it's a reminder today that we can take any passion and any interest and truly turn it into a personal brand empire. And Jen is a perfect example of that. So let's dive right into today's episode. So walk us back to the very, very beginning when you maybe were a first bridesmaid or you came up with the concept. Sure. So when I was in my early 20s, all of my friends got engaged and I was a bridesmaid in so many weddings. And one day in particular, after years of doing this, I had a couple distant friends who I hadn't spoken to in years. Those friends called me up on one Friday night. They asked me to be a bridesmaid. And I thought to myself, this is odd. I'm hardly friends with them. And I got this idea that not everyone has close friends. So what if I started a business where I offered my services to complete strangers as a bridesmaid for hire? I posted an ad on Craigslist. The ad blew up. That is so crazy. Later, I've been doing this for, you know, hundreds of people all over the country. Holy cow. So are you still the bridesmaid in the weddings or do you have, you are still the bridesmaid? I am. I still work weddings. I do have a team of people who work with me, but yeah. overall, I'm usually the one to go. That is so unique. And even when I was going on your website, I saw now that you have just taken that initial concept and branched it out into a bunch of different concepts. So could you speak into just how it's flourished now into all these different avenues? Yeah, so I started off just being the bridesmaid for hire, so brides could hire me to be the bridesmaid, but I also do other services for brides, whether it's virtual event sessions, behind the scenes type of work. I also work with maid of honors who want a maid of honor speech written for them, and I have a training course for people who want to start a similar type of wedding business or just a unique business in general. So multiple different avenues underneath one company. Oh my gosh. So let's go back to the even further in the beginning when you came up with the concept, because we were talking before I hit record about how I remember it was probably like five or six years ago you were on the Today Show, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, a couple times, but I think probably like the biggest time was maybe four years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I specifically remember watching that segment and um, that's how I just remembered throughout the years about the concept that you created. So from coming up with the idea and actually establishing it as a business, what was the time frame like before you were featured on all these major shows? So, you know, before I started this company, I was a writer, but before that, one of my first jobs out of college was working in PR. I knew nothing about it. I didn't like it. But ironically, when I started this business, I had that background. So I knew how to pitch myself. I knew how to contact media. So within three days of posting the ad on Craigslist, it had gone viral. And I was on 75 different media outlets. And then every single year since then, I've been doing press at least a couple times a month. So pretty fast. Wow, that is amazing. It's funny how those little experiences add up to your bigger idea. Like now this is your full-time business, but just out of college, you probably had no idea that you wanted to pursue this. Oh, of course not. I mean, I was a poetry major in college. I had you no were? Idea. Yes, I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life, but no one really should. I mean, I don't think you're supposed to graduate at 21, 22 and no. I think right. you're supposed to make every mistake possible. And by mistake, I mean, just say yes to a bunch of random jobs. They're all right. going to add up in your life. So let's go back to the PR side of things. What are a couple of tips that you feel like really helped you land those major features? 
you know, I think when people pitch, when they pitch themselves in the media, they make a big mistake. The media is not going to cover your business, your book, your podcast. They right. need a story. So you have to share your story. You have to do something relatable. You have to really understand what they write about, what they speak about and pitch to them, not about you. So right. I really had to study a lot of these, these different media outlets, understand what they put on and then adjust to that. Yeah. Wow. That is so incredible. So after that, can you just tell us like what a bridesmaid for hire, like what you actually do, what's your role? Cause I think some people might not completely understand. Oh, for sure. So it's exactly like the name. People hire me to show up, wear the maid of honor dress, walk down the aisle, pretend to know them from kindergarten, <laughs> maid of honor speech. It's totally what the name sounds like. And I know it sounds crazy, but you know, people need a support system when they get married. Right. They don't always have friends. So it's become something that a lot of people have heard about over the years. And then once they got engaged, they reach out and they're like, I was waiting to contact you. So um, it's a service that didn't exist before I put it out there to the world. And it's definitely a service that is for different people all over the world who might need the support system. And how many bride or how many weddings do you attend a year? Oh, I mean, it depends. There are some years where I did between 50 and 70 in one year, like Holy three or cow. four weekends. Uh, this year with the pandemic, it's right. a little bit, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot and they're all over the place. So some weekends you're in three different cities in one weekend. Holy cow. That is incredible, but I'm sure it's not as glamorous as it sounds. So what are some of the unglamorous sides of things? Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, I do think it's a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I think you right. have to put up with a lot of chaos. I mean, weddings are not perfect. So a lot of the imperfections right. fall on you. Uh, it's definitely tough. It's also tough on your body. You're wearing heels, but you're clocking like 20,000 steps. Right. So oh my gosh. It's, a lot. it's definitely a very tough job mentally and physically. Right. And I feel like that's what um, some people probably don't understand because they're thinking you get to eat all the food, you get to fly everywhere, but that is a lot to just get dressed for a wedding, the makeup, the hair, the dynamics in a dressing room, I'm sure. Oh my God. And it's like, you think it's glamorous, but those dresses are never glamorous to wear. <laughs> they never fit any normal human being. I mean, right. like, they're made for like, models who are 5'10", so you're wearing these dresses that are absurd, and it's, it's definitely a laughable kind of job. Yeah, so you actually branched out and wrote books about your experience. Three books, right? Yeah, I put my poetry degree to use, and I yes. published my first book, actually, before I started the business. I published my second book in 2017, and I'm currently writing a book called Finally the Bride, which is about my experience trying to get married in a year of the pandemic. Right. But, um, yeah, I've been writing nonfiction books for the past almost 10 years. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. And I love that it's called Finally the Bride, too. <laughs> it's so on brand. And especially, even though it's sad that it had to happen in 2020, I feel like it's something you can definitely look back on. And to have a book that was written during that time is something really special. I appreciate that because I think, you know, when I started writing the book, I had no idea the pandemic was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then when the pandemic happened, I thought, oh no, what's going to happen to this journey of the book? But you're right. I mean, like any story, there's twists and turns. I couldn't predict this, but right. it's definitely going to be a keepsake item for myself and really for anybody yeah. who's married as well. Right. And just like for down the years, like when it's year 2050 and we're reading about the pandemic, like those are the kind of social events that were also impacted. Totally. I feel like I'll never fully be able to under explain the pandemic to people, right. but I think from the perspective of how it's impacted, you know, big things like weddings and just life changes, I think mm -hmm. that will be really interesting to try to explain. And how has your business had to pivot because of the pandemic? Because, I mean, you were attending in-person events and flying. Yeah. You know, just like any business, I think you always have to be innovating and changing and scaling. And I've known that for a while. So even before the pandemic, we were offering virtual services. With the pandemic, we offered more. As weddings became okay to do in a socially distanced way, we've been back on the ground. So I think we've had to adjust, but I think, you know, it's scary for businesses to have to do that, but that's the way business works, whether it's a pandemic or not. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our um, listeners are people just starting out either with it, their business or developing a personal brand. So what are like your top three tips for success when it comes to developing that personal brand? You know, I think you need to know yourself first. I think you need to know what you're good at, what you, what's unique about you, play into those strengths. I also think you have to not try to be a copy of paste of anyone else. Mm -hmm. I think you have to really figure out, okay, how do you do you, not how do you copy yeah. 
people's brands. And then finally, I think you need to know what your personal mission is. I think that's going to drive you forward. You need to know right. why. I think those are things that really make a good personal brand. And especially for you, the copy and paste side of things, like you were not able to copy and paste from anyone because I mean, I've never even heard of another bridesmaid for hire at all. Um, exactly, yeah. So what was that like, like basically trailblazing this entire new industry and it, on the back end of the wedding industry? Like, what was that like? You know, you get a lot of pushback. There were so many people who called me crazy, who told me this was a bad idea, who were like, when are you going to stop doing this? So I think mm -hmm. when you are a trailblazer with a personal brand or a business or really anything out of the ordinary, people are going to question you and judge you. And you have to just be so strong inside of yourself to keep on going. The world right. is going to tell you to stop. You need to have the strength to say, no, I'm going to keep on going. Yeah. And so what's coming next for Bridesmaids for Hire? What do you see in the future? So many things. I just spent a long time working on like a future plan for Bridesmaids for Hire. We're launching a texting service so that you can text a Bridesmaid for Hire. We're launching more courses, wow. books, more and more and more. You know, it's a brand that has evolved in the past six years and I believe will continue to. Wow, that's incredible. So where can people connect with you and just invest in your courses or those future programs? Oh, I, I love that. I mean, you can come hang out with me on Instagram. I'm at Jen Glance. My website is jenglance.com. You can find my books on Amazon. And you can, of course, check out Bridesmaid for Hire at bridesmaidforhire.com. You'll see everything you ever wanted to know on that website. 